Hey everyone, my name is Diana Garcia. I'm a licensed mental health counselor in Florida, owner of a private practice called Nurturing Minds Counseling. Okay, I'm continuing my monthly book therapy series where I pick one mental health self-help book to highlight, encourage, slash recommend, as well as pick three insights for you guys to learn just from watching the video, just in case you never have time to actually pick up any of these books. So let's jump into this month's pick. All right, so this month's pick is Set Boundaries, Find Peace, A Guide to Reclaiming Yourself by Nidra Glover Tawab. I hope I'm saying her name right. Um, so this book was actually a pretty recent book. I think it was 2021 that it was published. It's about 282 pages. Um, she's actually super popular on Instagram. I think really she's made a name for herself for being a therapist that focuses exclusively on boundaries and how that looks like in relationships, in your life, um, work, all different areas of your life. So I think it just makes sense that she ultimately ended up writing a book about boundaries. Okay, just start off with a quick summary. The book is broken down into two parts. So part one, as you can see here, it's understanding the importance of boundaries. And this is kind of, I would say, a good portion of the book. And this is the portion of the book where she just does a lot of education on what is boundaries, uh, what does it mean, or the cost of not having boundaries, different types of boundary, boundary violations. So it just really goes into details about uh, everything to do with boundaries and breaks it down in a really easy to understand format. Um, and then part two, she'll go through different areas of your life and how you can actually set boundaries. So she talks about like, what about what do boundaries in family relationships look like friendships, romantic work, um, and even to a certain degree boundaries with yourself. And she also talks about boundaries with technology and social media. Okay, so insight number one from the book, it's just breaking down the three different types of boundaries. So the first type, as you can see here, is called porous boundaries. So that's pretty much when you or someone you know has little to no boundaries or uh, if you do set any type of boundaries, they tend to be pre pretty weak, meaning like you don't communicate them well or you don't follow through on actually whatever boundary you said you're gonna maintain. Uh, so if you think of porous, it's kind of like this sense of, you know, things are seeping in. And so that's how you would imagine it, you in relationship to other people, that there is no sense of healthy distance or connection in terms of what you need to make sure you're okay and safe. And then what other people need, it's kind of this, it seeps into one or the other and or other areas of your life. So work seeps into your personal or vice versa. So there's no real clear boundaries. So an example of this would be, People who constantly say yes, uh, people who consider themselves people pleasers, codependency, enmeshment, or again, just a sense of feeling overwhelmed and that you have to do it all because you struggle to say no. The second type of boundary would be kind of like the extreme opposite. This would be more rigid boundaries. So this would be when you tend to kind of put up these very clear kind of thick walls around yourself. So you set a boundary and you're completely kind of fixed in that way, no matter what the situation or circumstance might call for you to be a little bit more flexible, you don't shift or budge. So typically someone with rigid boundaries, um, they tend to really struggle to let people in. So they struggle with maybe being vulnerable, sharing their emotions. And so what feels safe for them is to have these very clear walls so that and rigid boundaries so that they don't feel like they get hurt, but sometimes that leads them to feeling isolated or having relationships that, that are kind of more superficial or keeping people at a distance. You don't really have those true intimate kind of relationships that there's a lot of vulnerability. And then the third type, it's healthy boundaries. So this, I wouldn't say it's a mix of both, but it's more of like a balanced approach. So this would be the case where you're aware of your internal and external resources. So meaning like, you know what you have in terms of capacity, time, money, physical, emotional energy. And when you're engaging with people or different areas of your life, you have that sense very clear and then you communicate and set limits based on knowing kind of where you're at in the moment. You don't let the past influence your behavior in terms of when you're setting boundaries, but you're also able to be pretty flexible depending on the situation. So I think that's the other thing when we think of healthy boundaries. Again, they're not very rigid. They're set in place to make sure you're feeling safe and that you're taking care of yourself, 
but at the same time, you can be fluid and flexible depending on the situation. And so at the end of one of the chapters, that might even be chapter one or two, she actually has a self-assessment quiz that you can take to see if you tend to have more porous or rigid boundaries, or maybe you have healthy boundaries. So I thought that was really cool. And actually throughout the book, she has that she has exercises that, you know, you can actually do written exercises as well as just maybe self-reflection. Okay, insight number two is to expect uncomfortable feelings could show up. And these are kind of a list of feelings that she says that are most common when you're starting to set boundaries. So the first one, the most common one is guilt. So she talks about setting boundaries is hard work. I mean, if it were easy, then we wouldn't really struggle with this or a lot of us that do struggle with this. So recognizing that uncomfortable feelings is part of the process, uh, particularly she talks about guilt being the most common one. And the work isn't to get rid of them, meaning like even though you know that you have to set a boundary deep down, you know that this has been long overdue, it doesn't mean that the guilt is going to go away. The feeling is going to show up and the work is more in you learning to manage these uncomfortable feelings. The other couple ones that are common, she talks about sadness because maybe, you know, you think that you might be coming off as a mean person or harsh. Maybe other people tell you that, that you're setting the boundaries. Uh, betrayal. Again, even though you know you need to set some of these limits, it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't feel like you're betraying that person or that area of your life and or remorse. So even if you do go forward with setting a boundary, maybe you regret it afterwards or you regret maybe how you said it, how it happened, maybe you thought maybe it could have gone better. Again, just recognizing there's no such thing as perfect and that these feelings might show up. It's just part of the process. So the work is to get really comfortable feeling uncomfortable. The third insight, it's just really quickly talking about the different types of boundaries. So the first one is physical boundaries. So that's really anything having to do with kind of your physical space, your personal space in your body. So what feels comfortable for you in terms of body contact, physical touch, um, you know, like in terms of greetings, do you like when someone gives you a handshake, a hug, a kiss on the cheek? And so Physical boundaries is you being really clear on what feels safe for you when it comes to physical boundaries. Second one is sexual boundaries. So this is taking it a step further from just the physical, but anything related to kind of sexual contact, um, any sexual intimacy. And so this is the really clear boundary of you making sure that you're setting your limits of what's okay for you sexually or not in any interaction. And also that there's very clear consent when engaging in any type of sexual relationship. Um, This also can relate to maybe sexual jokes or innuendos or just kind of maybe comments that feel uncomfortable but that are sexual in nature. So that would fall in this realm. The third one, intellectual. So that's more of related to your thoughts or ideas about certain things, topics, and if you feel like if you, you know, talk about your beliefs that you get belittled or shut down or just maybe yelled at. So that would be a violation when it comes to your intellectual boundaries. Another example that she goes through in the book with intellectual boundaries, it's also as adults making sure that we're not sharing information that's not appropriate for children. So maybe something going on that really isn't appropriate for a child to know based on their age. That would be an example of an intellectual boundary violation. The next one would be emotional. So that would be in the realm of your feelings. So anytime you maybe express your feelings and you feel like you get invalidated or shut down, uh, that would be an emotional boundary violation. Another example of this would be people who tend to overshare. So either too quickly or just all the time. So someone that maybe, you know, you just met a couple hours ago and all of a sudden you've just exchange your deep dark kind of story but it's not appropriate meaning like the trust hasn't really been built um the other part would be if someone who just constantly tends to like dump on you meaning like emotionally they just call you and before you know it you're like in all of their stuff like they you know and maybe they haven't really checked in if it's the right time for you because all they do it's like when they reach out to you it's just kind of unload and you're left with all their things to deal with The fifth one is material, so just related to anything concrete. So your items, your possessions, including your money. So what that looks like when maybe people borrow something, never return it, including money, or uh, say they're going to borrow money, return it at a certain date and don't. So that would be any boundary related to materials. And then last one is time. So the way you manage your time, the way you're able to 
have time for the things that are important to you or the way that certain areas of your life tend to consume too much of your time. So any sense of feeling like your time management is out of alignment completely and you don't feel in control of it, that would be an example of maybe boundaries that need to happen in this area of your life. Okay, lastly, so who can benefit? I think that anyone who really identifies with having porous boundaries could especially benefit from this book. Not to say that if you have rigid boundaries, you can't benefit, but particularly uh, with the porous boundaries, because a lot of the work in here is talking about setting boundaries and what that looks like. Um, I'd say that that's someone who could really benefit from picking up this book. But in general, if you just want more information on boundaries, what that looks like, I would also recommend it because like I said, part one is really heavy on a lot of just concrete good tips about um, boundaries and what that looks like in different areas of your life. All right, so this is all the ways you can stay in touch with me. If you're finding me on YouTube, I encourage you to subscribe. If you're finding me on my website, I encourage you to subscribe to my newsletter so you can stay up to date on all the latest content. All right, guys, I encourage you to continue nurturing your mind, body, and soul, whatever that looks like for you. Thanks.